the author of insurance reform, Prop 103, Harvey Rosenfield, who also happens to be Consumer Watchdog's founder. He's taken on the rich, we take on the richest corporations every day for one reason, because back in 1988, Harvey slayed the insurance industry, and we've built on that success. So it's his rage for justice that started this, and for the 25th anniversary of Prop 103, our first celebration, we'd like to play a video talking about that landmark change and what it's meant to the people of California. Let it play. And a whole new battle began today in California where voters also approved a 20% cut in auto insurance rates. The insurance industry is fighting mad, as you may have guessed, and NBC's George Lewis has more. The leaders of the so-called voters' revolt were rocking, rolling, and reveling early this morning. They had passed Proposition 103 in spite of a $60 million insurance industry campaign against it. That industry is up in arms. Today, Allstate told its agents to stop selling new auto insurance policies in California. So did the Auto Club. Fireman's Fund was threatening to close up shop and lay off hundreds of employees. Harvey Rosenfield, author of the initiative, says if insurance companies can't compete, if they're that inefficient, bye-bye. There is an expression, at least there is an expression in California, that when California sneezes, the nation catches cold. If it is true, insurance companies across the country should really have their handkerchiefs out tonight because in a huge victory for consumers, the California Supreme Court has upheld Proposition 103. This is a tremendous victory for the consumers of California, a tremendous triumph for grassroots democracy, in this country. Since Prop 103 passed in 1988, the insurance companies have complied with most of its provisions, but the one provision the industry has kept fighting is how it determined those rates. Should your zip code have anything to do with how much you pay for car insurance? There is no reason that the people that live in these houses should pay a different rate if they're a good driver than the people that live across the street. So people wanted their premium based on their driving record. In 2006, then-Commissioner John Garamendi set today as the deadline for insurance companies to phase in new formulas for setting rates based on primarily driving record, annual mileage, and number of years of driving experience. Bottom line, good drivers should soon start paying less for insurance than bad drivers, no matter where they live. Your side's Michael Finney is here now with the impact that Prop 103 has had in this state. Yeah. Let me tell you, it saved billions and billions and billions, at least according to this study, $60 billion worth of savings can all be tracked back to the voter-approved Prop 103. A major insurance company is lowering its rates. That will mean savings for nearly half a million drivers here in California. So what we're advocating is that Allstate needs to lower its rates under new regulations that, that were implemented earlier this year. Allstate was told to comply with a $250 million rate reduction. State Insurance Commissioner Dave Jones announcing a $70 million decrease in auto insurance rates. They didn't do this out of the goodness of their hearts. We petitioned to force Auto Club to lower its rates because Auto Club didn't want to lower its rates. Consumer advocates say the real credit goes to voters who passed Proposition 103 in 1988. Current law passed by California voters 24 years ago, when rates were running wild, requires that your rates be based primarily on your driving record, the number of years you've driven, the number of miles you drive. Auto insurance Prop 33 makes golden promises. Prop 33 would make whether or not you've had continuous car insurance coverage a factor insurers could also use to set your rates. But big surcharges could be in the offing. You're watching CBS 5 Eyewitness News. CBS 5 reporter Mark Sayer looks at the winners and losers who wagered millions. Insurance executive George Joseph spent $16.9 million on Proposition 33. So there you have it, uh, Proposition 33 uh, going down in flames 55% to 45%. Regulation of rates, stringent regulation of rates, is, this, is the only way to protect consumers and results in lower auto insurance premiums. You can take on the biggest industry in this country and you can win. Founder of 
consumer watchdog and the Captain Kirk of the consumer movement in America, Harvey Rosenfield. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Howard Zinn, the historian whose uh, work we'll come back to later tonight, held in high esteem those he called the troublemakers. The troublemakers, Howard Zinn said, are, quote, the people who gave this country whatever liberty and democracy it has. Now, I look out at this astonishing crowd tonight, and I am humbled to be among you, <clears throat> because I see here a room full of troublemakers. <clears throat> Nurses in the ICU who refuse to let their patients' health be jeopardized by profit-driven health insurance companies. Lawyers who every day take on reckless corporations without fear, or hesitation, and artists who wield the greatest power in our culture, the power of an idea, the power of story, the power to move masses with words. Now, if you told me back in 1987 that I would devote half of my life to enforcing Prop 103, <laughs> I probably would have laughed. But looking back, you know what, it's no surprise. Because guess what? Beating the insurance industry at the ballot box, that was the easy part. It was what happened after election day that mattered most. It's not like the voters pass a law requiring the biggest industry in the nation to give back $20 billion a year, and when that happens, the, the industry just hands it over? No questions asked? Uh-uh. That is not how the insurance industry rolls. The industry did everything it could to cripple Prop 103 after it passed, F filed over 100 lawsuits, got the legislature to repeal parts of Prop 103, tried to elect a friendly insurance commissioner. It took us 18 years of litigation just to get the industry to comply with the part of the law that requires companies to base your premiums on your driving safety record rather than your zip code. But we knew this would happen. And we embraced the battle every single day, and we won. And that, that, that is the achievement we celebrate this evening. The uncompromising 25-year fight for justice that stands as proof that when the people speak, they will be obeyed. Tonight, I'm going to recognize the women and men who have raged so relentlessly over the last quarter century to defend and enforce Prop 103. Now, I want to begin with somebody who you've seen on this stage nearly every year since the very first Rage for Justice dinner in 2002. You all know Doug Heller for his incredible skill as an advocate, his grace, and his leadership at Consumer Watchdog for the last 16 years. Doug, stand up, please, and stay standing. Doug, as you embark on a new and exciting path, we at Consumer Watchdog and every one of us here tonight salute you for your invaluable service to our organization and to the cause of justice. Thank you so much, Doug. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to 1988. And, and while I do this, you're gonna to wanna to applaud. But I wanna ask you to wait. I will give you the signal when it's okay to applaud, but don't applaud till I give you that signal, okay? All right. First, there are several people who aren't here who I want to recognize. My mentor, Ralph Nader, whose credibility back in 1988 reassured, don't, don't applaud, no applause yet. His credibility in 1988 reassured Californians that it was safe to vote for 103. 
Bob Hunter, the guru of insurance reform, Alan Schwartz, consumer watchdog's insurance actuary, John Phillips, an early and longtime supporter, and master strategist Chris Lehane. Not of the people in the room tonight. Back in 1987, my buddy Jay Angoff helped me draft parts of Prop 103. Constitutional law professor Carl Mannheim defended 103 against the industry's legal challenge before the state Supreme Court in 1989, and along with Joe Kachet, won a unanimous opinion upholding the law. Fred Wucher and Michael Stromwasser represented the people of the state of California in that same case, and many more thereafter. There's no group of lawyers we want on our side more than the Stromwasser and Wucher team. Ann Carlson and Carl Moore won the landmark Supreme Court ruling that the legislature had no authority to repeal parts of Prop 103. The staff of CAOC, led by another old friend, Nancy Drabble, has watched 103's back in Sacramento many a time. Now wait, I know you want to applaud, so do I, but hang on. Also here tonight is the man whose job it is on a day-to-day -day basis to protect the rights of California consumers in almost everything relating to insurance, Adam Cole, the General Counsel of the Department of Insurance. Finally, and, that, and perhaps most important, I want to recognize Consumer Watchdog's legal team for their tireless advocacy of Prop 103 inside and outside the courtroom. Lawyers Jerry Flanagan, Laura Antonini, paralegal Jason Roberts, and our litigation director, Pam Presley, who you'll meet in a few moments. No one is more responsible for delivering the billions of dollars in Prop 103 savings than Pam Presley. Pam, I bow before you. Not, not yet, not yet. Okay, looking back over the last 25 years, you wanna know what makes me so proud? Especially, do you guys want to know over there? Or do you want to have your dinner? If I did something worth noting over all these years, it was to find people who are willing to fight might with right. People who get up every day as I do, indignant and offended by injustice and driven to stop it. Who are not satisfied with merely trying, but insist on winning winning. Consumer Watchdog is a team of advocates unlike any in the nation, and it's led by one of the most unique, shrewd, and indefatigable people I've ever met, a real troublemaker. A guy who literally will not take no for an answer, and in fact, sometimes yes isn't good enough for Jamie Court. Okay, we're almost there, ladies and gentlemen. All of you whose names I've just mentioned, I would like you to please stand. Every single one of you that I just mentioned. Not yet. Not yet. This is wicked, isn't it? Crowd control, I'm not good at it. I also, I want your loved ones to stand with you. I want everybody I just mentioned and your loved ones and your friends who are here tonight to stand with you. That includes my wife, Georgia, my daughter, Maisie, and my son, Cody's back in DC, so I wish he could be here tonight. Sorry about that. Here's what I want to say to you, the families and friends. We missed more than a few family dinners and events. We came home from work a little distracted on occasion, or maybe even a tad grumpy. We stayed up late many nights to finish a report or a press release. Yes, we even worked while on vacation. We thank you, our friends and family, for bearing with us, for understanding, and for your love. We, you should know this. We could not have done it without you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come to acclaim these warriors. The people who did 103.